Today, we're tying the steelhead bugger. Hey everyone, Matt here with The Northern Angler. We're a small, independent fly shop located in Traverse City, Michigan. You can find all the materials you need and lots more at thenorthernangler.com. The steelhead bugger is a variation of the classic woolly bugger that's tied with a natural color scheme and heavier hooks to handle big fish. It's a fly that you'll find in every single guide box throughout the Midwest because they're so extremely effective. Now the jury's still out on what the steelhead think these are, but I think their ability to imitate so many different things in the water is the exact reason you should have some in your box the next time you're headed to the water. Let's go ahead and take a look at the materials we'll be using today. For the hook, we'll be using the TMC 5262, a 2X long and 2X heavy hook, perfect for larger nymphs and smaller streamers. The thread is 6 hot Vivas in black, simple, reliable, and easy to use. For the tail, I use a single plume of black marabou. Whether you want to use bugger marabou or strung quills, they'll both work fine. On each side, I add a folded piece of crystal flash. Peacock, standard pearl, or pearl black all look good. The body is peacock curl. I typically use four to five strands for this size hook, so you may want to add more for the larger sizes. For the hackle, Strong saddles or feathers from a neck work great. Standard brown, furnace, or grizzly will complete the look. To hold the hackle in place and add some durability, we'll wrap some copper ultra wire and brassy up to the head to finish things off. To get the full material list, check out the link in the description. There, you'll find a full write-up on this fly and tons of other great information. Once you've got your hook securely in the vise, Start your thread right at the eye. We're just going to create a basic thread base here. We're going to work back to the point of the hook. There, I'm going to trim any excess. I'm going to grab a single plume of marabou. You don't need a whole lot here. And I'm just going to preen that back and I want to measure it. So I'm going to drop it down. I'm looking for the measurement between the eye and the bend of the hook. Okay, once I have that, I kind of just hop back here. Transfer that to my other hand. Loose gathering wrap, two, three, working back towards the barb. Once that's in place, if you really want this to not spin on you, lift up the tip here, put three or four wraps, and then you can start wrapping up the shank towards the eye. We're going to save ourselves a little bit of space up there. Try not to trim your thread here. And then I'm going to work back to that tie in point right by the barb. To add a little bit of flash here, I'm going to grab some crystal flash. I'm just going to utilize one piece. I'm going to trim it in half. And then half again. I like to fold my flash. You can lay it in, do whatever works best for you. This is just fast for me and efficient. I've done this this way for a long time. Rotate my vise here. Do the same thing on the opposite side. Now we have two little lines of flash going back and I'm going to pull them together and trim them right at the tips. Great. Next, I'm going to tie in a piece of small copper wire. And this just can be loosely wrapped. We're going to wrap over this again, place it in my material spring, keep it out of the way. That's going to be our final piece. That's why it needs to get tied in first. It's going to go over that peacock curl and over the hackle. Grab a few strands of peacock curl and we're going to tie them in by the tips. Put a few wraps on top and then we can start working towards the eye of the hook. Once you get up there, you can just pull the tips or trim them, whatever you feel comfortable with. If you really want a durable fly, you can go back over again if you want, but bring that thread up to the eye. Grab your peacock curl, bring them vertical, give them a 
teeny little twist, half a twist, full twist, and there you can start wrapping the body. And that twist just helps them stay together just a little bit better. And once you get up here, a few of them are gonna start to work themselves out. So I usually use my index finger and every wrap, I just press my, press my finger down here and push that material under and over to my other hand. Gather, tie them off, three on top, three in front. Trim that excess, work back on it a little bit. That secures your tie-in point and makes room for the next piece of the puzzle. I'm gonna grab a hackle feather from the back of my neck. And before I tie this in, I'm just gonna create a little tie-in point here by preening some of these feathers down and you can pull them if you want, up to you, trim them, whatever works. I'm just gonna create a nice uniform tie-in point. Work towards the eye, lift up just like we did in the marabou. Trim that, get that out of the way. Now I can begin to work this hackle. I'm always gonna put a full wrap right at the beginning before I start to spread this out because I'm wanna, I wanna wrap back on that. Makes it look good, secures the hackle at the end. And I'm gonna use that same technique where I'm just using my index finger kind of to save my work as I work my way up. You can use hackle pliers if you have them. This is just, just quick and easy. Again, this is a utility fly. It's not designed to look you know, show worthy or anything like that. Make sure you grab your wire when you get back. And I'm gonna capture the tip there. And now I'm gonna slowly work this wire, weaving it back and forth, open wraps, trying not to capture too much hackle. This is what's really gonna make this a durable fly. Bring that hackle out a little bit. You're always gonna catch some, can't help it. Get up to the front here. Put some wraps on top of that. A few in front. And here I just pinch in close. Can I do this helicopter thing? All right, take a look at what we got. I'm gonna trim That tip out, preen this back. I'm gonna put some thread wraps on top of the wire and that hackle and create a little thread head. Once that's done, grab your whip finish. Five, six turn whip finish will do just fine. Trim off any excess. Preen everything out. Make sure you haven't trapped too many hackle fibers it happens, like I said. If you want to make this extra durable, grab a little bit of UV epoxy. You do not need much. And then bring, get your light. Hit it with the light. And you're ready to go. This really is a simple fly that's worth having in your box. Now, could we add some steps to make it more durable or even prettier? Sure, but we're tying these to be expendable. We're going to fish these around wood and we wanna be willing to lose a few to find the fish that are holding in those sketchy spots. You can also add some lead wraps, a bead, or even a cone if you like. But typically, we rely on supplemental weight like split shot to get our rigs and flies down to the bottom. With these flies unweighted, they tend to suspend up from the bottom where the fish are feeding and move a little bit more natural in the current. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If any of this was helpful, think about hitting that thumbs up button. It's a big help for us. If you'd like to support the channel, think about checking out thenorthernangler.com the next time you need materials or anything else related to fly fishing. We got so much great stuff. If you're not ordering from us, try and support your local fly shop. I know they'll appreciate it. All right, get tying everyone. We hope to see you soon in the shop or out on the water.